Master bless. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For peace from above and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For peace in the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for those who entered with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our Archbishop and Father Savas, the Honorable Presbyters, the Deacons in Christ, and for all the clergy and lady, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our country, the President, and for those in public service, and for the armed forces everywhere, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this parish and city, and for every city and land, and for the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for favorable weather and abundance of the fruits of the earth and temperate seasons, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For travelers by land, sea, and air, for the sick, the suffering, the captives, and their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, that there took us and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Lord our God, whose power is beyond compare and glory is beyond understanding, whose mercy is boundless and love for us is ineffable, look upon us and upon this holy house in your compassion and grant to us and those who pray with us your abundant mercy. For to you belong all glory, honor, and worship to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Sing to 
Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, that there took us and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For you are a good and loving God, and to you we give glory, to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. church that is on page two of your bulletin.
Master, guide to wisdom, giver of prudent counsel, instructor of the foolish and champion of the poor. Make firm my heart and grant it understanding. O word of the Father, give me words for see. I shall not stop my lips from crying out to you. I am fallen in your compassion. Have mercy on me. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For you are holy, our God, and to you we give glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. And to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Holy, holy God, we dwell among your saints. We are praised by the seraphim of the thrice holy. holy brought all things out of nothing, and you created them on the earth, like the sun, with all the gifts of your grace. Give wisdom and understanding to the supplicant, and not overlook the sin, and establish repentance as a way of salvation. Give and enable us, your lovely and worthy servants, to stand in this hour, and give glory to all things that offer you worship. Praise the Master, accept the Christ, holy and all servant, and give your lips and the sins, and visit us in your goodness. Forgive our voluntary and all our generations, and sanctify our souls and bodies, and grant them the worship of service. Let us be attentive. In Judah, God is known. His name is great in Israel. Wisdom. The reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Let us attend. Brethren, salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed the night is far gone, the day is at hand. Let us then cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves becomingly as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and lichiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put, on, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to, gratis, to, gratis, to gratify its desires. As for man who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not for disputes over opinions. 
One believes he may eat anything, while the weak man eats only vegetables. Let not him who despises him who abstains, and let and let not him who abstains pass judgment on him who eats, for God has welcomed him. Who are who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls, and he will be upheld, for God is able to make him stand. Peace be to you, the reader. Wisdom arise, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with all. And with your the reading is from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Let us attend. The Lord said, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And when you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces, that their fasting may be seen by men. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by men, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. Peace be to you who proclaim the Holy Gospel. Good morning, children of our church school. Please come to the front. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Anybody here ever seen the movie Mary Poppins? Uh, the new one or the old one? The original or the remake? Both of them. I have to say we watched one the other day. And when I was little, honestly, it was one of my favorite movies. We used to sing the music and all that kind of stuff. Uh, does anybody remember what this was from Mary Poppins? What was... Oh, sorry. Let me I ask the question, but I didn't give you the microphone to answer. So, what was that? No, say it again. Her bag. Her bag. Anybody remember what was in her bag? Anybody remember anything that was in Mary Poppins' bag? An umbrella. There was an umbrella. A lamp. There was a lamp. 
<laughs> what else? What else? Yes, sweetie. Um. A lot of stuff, huh? A lot of stuff. Like there was even an umbrella stand, wasn't there? She just pulled, she just reached in and she just, like, it kept coming out and out and out. Like there was so much stuff in there, yes. One time I saw a video where this guy pulled a lady out of the Yes, that's okay. Well, so we're sticking with Mary Poppins this morning. All right, anyway, so I thought to myself, it might be kind of fun to take a look in my bag and think about stuff. Like, so Mary Poppins brought stuff, right? And she had a purpose for all of it. And uh, some of it was to give away, some of it was herself. But does anybody remember when you were little, that, uh, or littler than you are now, like stuff that was really important or stuff that you really wanted? So I'm thinking to myself, I looked into my bag and mm, there, there's a balloon in there. When I was little, we had these cool balloons we were decorating with at church one day, and I wanted a balloon so bad, but somebody else wanted it, and I didn't share, and I got into real trouble. In fact, my Thea screamed at me about it and chewed me out, and what happened to the balloon eventually? Anybody know? What happened to the balloon? It popped. Yeah, it just like, and that was it. So I, I thought it was so cool, and then gone, right? Let's see. Hmm. I really wanted a record player because I had these little 45s that I wanted to play. You don't know what 45s are, that's okay. You don't even know what records are, that's okay too. But, but uh, so what do you think happened to that? Like it was really important. It's like, I want that record player so bad. What do you think happened to the record player afterwards or today if it was, if it was still working? It probably broke. It, it broke. And even if it wasn't broken by now, where are the records? What's a record, right? So, you know. But it was really important back then. It was stuff. It was a thing that was so important. Uh, let's see what else is in here. Oh, my first cell phone. My first cell phone. Wow. How long do you think that lasted? Anybody have any idea how long my first cell phone lasted? A day. Uh, it was a little more than a day. <laughs> but it only lasted until I dropped it. And what happened when I dropped it? It broke. it broke. The screen cracked, that was it. It was like back in the days before Gorilla Glass. That's all. All right, so who wants to look into your bag and tell me what's the, what's the stuff in your bag? The stuff you really wanted, it was really important when you were little. Anybody remember? Hey, Mary, go ahead. Yes, what's in, what's in yours? Look down in there. What's in there? What's yours? What did you want? A book. A book? Yes. You really wanted a book? Yes. And did you get the book? And did you read the book? And then what happened? The pages curled and everything. The book, you enjoyed it for a while, but that wasn't the thing that you were like, long-term wanted in your life, right? What else? Who else? Is there another one? What's in your, look deep down in there. What's, in, what's that thing that you really, really wanted one day in your life? What was it? Can you think of it? What? A big stuffed animal. A big stuffed animal. Did you get it? Did you get a stuffed animal? You have stuffed animals? Do you play with them? And then what happens? They're not broken. No, they don't break, but what happens with your stuffed animals after a while? The fur isn't that soft. Yeah, 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 and so they start to wear out. Uh, yes, Oliver, what's in, look down, deep, look, deep, stand up, look deep inside. What's, what was in there that you really wanted, that stuff that you? Uh, well, uh, I got um, a football, and then I got a football, and then I left it in the yard next to my house, and someone stole it. <laughs> Okay, so you got a football. So there's a lot of stuff. Now, here's the thing. What's in common with all of this, and I'm just gonna keep using the word stuff. What's the problem with stuff? What's the problem, huh? What's, how, what happens? Yes, Luke. It always breaks. Well, it breaks, or what can happen? Sometimes it doesn't break. What else can happen? It gets worn down. It gets worn down. What's another problem that happens? Yes. It breaks, kind yeah. of. It could break, that's right. What else? One other thing. You forget about it? Yeah, you forget about it, you get bored with it. So the thing that was so important right now, I just want everything, I'll do anything for it. Mom, Dad, please. And then, oh, that? And your mom and dad walk by and it's laying on the floor, or it's broken, and they're like, does anybody here have a toy that you used to play with that you don't play with anymore? 
Everybody, please raise your hands, okay? I'm a parent, I know, this is how it works. All right. Well, Jesus kind of recalibrates us. He kind of reorients us today because he tells us, be careful about putting so much emphasis in your life on stuff. Here's the quote. You heard it as Deacon Matthew so excellently read the gospel. This was the end of the gospel this morning. Do not lay up for yourselves treasure on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up, your, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I want you to repeat that last thing after me. Where your treasure is, say that. There your heart will be also. Okay, so what's in your heart? What's in your heart? Stuffed animals, toys, cell phones. What's in your heart? Love. Love is in your heart. And remember when St. Paul talks about it, he says the greatest of these gifts is love. So when it comes to stuff in this life and our relationships with people, what's more important? Hmm? What's more important, the stuff or the people? Huh? The stuff or the people? The people. Okay. What's more important in our relationship with God, the stuff or God? God. What's more important if we have stuff? Is it more important that we just keep it to ourselves and everything is about us? Or we also use it and share it with others? That's being kind. Being kind and using and sharing with others, right. So be very, very careful. We're heading into Lent. And one of the things we do with Lent is we kind of pull back from our emphasis on stuff and we put our emphasis on God. We put our emphasis on people. And what is the thing that binds us to God and other people? Say it again quickly. You just said it. Love. You said that, didn't you, earlier? Yeah. Who said love? You said love. Say it again. Love. Love. Love is the thing that brings this all together. So as we get into Lent, you work with your parents, OK? I want you to work with them on some fasting. It's a good thing the church asks us to do that. You are all old enough one way or another to do at least a little bit of fasting talk with your parents because that puts the emphasis on our love of God and our dependency on him, not the stuff of food. Also, prayer. That's not only your own personal prayer, but that's coming to church. We're going to really need, especially our teens, to come in and do our pre-sanctified liturgy readings because we really appreciate that. And that's putting the emphasis on the stuff of time and saying, it's not all mine. I'm going to give it to God as well. And then when it comes to other stuff, let's say you do really want something and you're saving up something, maybe it's also good to give something to the poor and help somebody else that's in need because that's not using all of the stuff of money that we have for just us. It's using it for God's purpose as well. So why is it at the end of the day here, why is it that we want during Lent and really in many times in our life to not be always looking in that bag and saying, oh, there's stuff in there for me, but rather using the things that God provides in our life, the things that we earn even, and using them for his glory, using them for others, using them for the Lord's purposes. It's because, back to the gospel, where your treasure is, everybody? Ah, come on. Where your treasure is, I don't hear everybody. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And may your heart always be in the love of God. God bless you. Please rise. Wisdom and grant that always guarded by your power, we may give glory to you, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
now and ever into the ages of ages. <coughs> Let us pray to the Lord. desires and pleasures is worthy to approach, draw near and to you, the King of glory, to serve you as great and awesome, even for the heavenly powers, but because of your ineffable and immeasurable love for us, you became man without alteration or change. You have served as a high priest and Lord of all, and trust with us a celebration, and the church with sacrifice without the shedding of blood. For you alone, Lord our God, rule over all things in heaven and earth, you are seated on the throne of the cherubim, the Lord of the seraphim, and the King of Israel. You alone are holy and well among your saints, you are alone and good and ready to hear. Therefore, I implore you, look upon me, your sinful and unworthy servant, and cleanse my soul and heart with consciousness. Enable me by the power of the Holy Spirit, the best with the grace of priest, that I may stand before your holy table and celebrate the mystery of your holy, pure body, and your precious blood. Do I come with bowed head and pray, do not turn your face away from me, nor reject me from your children. Make me your sinful and unworthy servant, worthy to offer you these gifts. For you, Christ, for God, the offer of the offer, the one who receives and is distributed into you, we give glory together with your eternal Father and your all holy, good life, and Holy Spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. We who mystically represent the church and sing the Christ hold the hymn to the life giving Trinity. Let us lie aside all the cares of this life. So they received the King of all, was invisibly escorted by the angelic host. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Who is invisibly escorted by the angelic host. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We who mystically represent the church and sing the Christ hold the hymn to the life giving Trinity. Let us set aside all. At this time. So whether we receive the King of all, who is invisibly escorted by the angel of Come, let us worship God our King and bow down before him. Come, let us worship and bow down before Christ himself, our King and our God. We offer the sins of Christ our God and offer the Spirit for praise. Except for when you have the altar to send upon us the return of grace of the Holy Spirit. Having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. We venerate your cross, O Christ, and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. You are our God, we know none other than you. We call upon your holy name. Come, all you faithful. Let us worship the holy resurrection of Christ. And behold, through the cross, joy has come to all the world. Ever blessing the Lord, let us praise his resurrection. For enduring the cross for us, he, was, he has destroyed death by death. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your great mercy and according to the multitude of eternal mercies. Blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions. And my sins ever before you against you, may only by sin and none that which is evil in your sight, that you may be found justified when you speak and blameless when you are judged. Behold, I was brought forth in the iniquity of the sin. You shall purge me this and you shall be you shall wash me, I shall be white in the snow. You shall make me your sounds of joy and gladness, that the bones that you are broken may rejoice. Turn your face away from my sins. And blot all of my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart of God, renew the right spirit in me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Of all my heavens, care the Lord, you shall look for us. And thou shalt earn us your praise and desire and sacrifice.
May the Lord our God remember those who love us and those who hate us. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. May that self same Spirit can celebrate with us all the days of our lives. Remember me, Holy Spirit. May the Lord our God remember your diaconate in his kingdom always, now and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Then they shall offer bulls upon your altar, but then you see the Pistachios, Moscow's, then they shall offer bulls upon your altar. And have mercy on me, O God. Let us complete our prayer to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the precious gifts here presented, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for those who entered with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. For a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us ask the Lord. Us, o Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask the Lord. Amen. For forgiveness and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. 
For all that is good and beneficial to our souls and for peace in the world, let us ask the Lord. This, o Lord. For completion of our lives and peace and repentance, let us ask the Lord. This, o Lord. For a Christian end to our lives, peaceful without <laughs> shame and suffering, and for a good defense before the awesome judgment seat of Christ, let us ask the Lord. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, that they had helped us and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ our God. To you, o Lord. Lord God Almighty, you alone are holy. You accept the sacrifice of praise from those who call upon you with their whole heart. Receive also the prayer of us sinners and let it reach your holy altar. Enable us to bring before you gifts and spiritual sacrifices for our sins and for the transgressions of the people. Make us worthy to find grace in your presence that our sacrifice may be pleasing to you. That your good and gracious spirit may abide with us with the gifts here presented and with all your people. Through the mercies of your only begotten Son with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy good and life giving spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Peace be with all. Let us love one another, that with one mind we may confess. in wisdom, let us be attentive. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten not created, of one essence of the Father, through whom all things are made, who for us men for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was in the card of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and became man. He was crucified for us into Pontius Pilate, and suffered and was buried, and he rose on the third day according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated in the third hand of the Father, and he will come again with the glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom shall have no end, and in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the creator of life, proceeds from the Father, and together the Father and Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke to the prophets, in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess some baptism for the forgiveness of sins, I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the age to come. Amen. Let us stand aright, let us stand in awe, let us be attentive, that we may present the holy offering in peace.
it is proper and right to sing to you, to bless you, praise you, thank you, and worship you in all places of your dominion. For you are God, ineffable beyond comprehension, invisible beyond understanding, existing forever and always the same. You and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit, you brought us into being out of nothing, and when we fell, you raised us up again. You did not cease doing everything until you led us to heaven and granted us your kingdom to come. For all these things, we thank you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit for all things we know and do not know for blessings, seen and unseen that have been bestowed upon us. We also thank you for this liturgy which you are pleased to accept from our hands, even though you are surrounded by thousands of archangels and tens of thousands of angels, by the cherubim and the seraphim, six-winged, many-eyed, soaring with their wings, singing the victory hymn, proclaiming, crying out and saying, Together with these blessed powers, merciful Master, we also proclaim and say, You are holy and most holy, you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. You are holy and most holy, and sublime is your glory. You so loved your world that you gave your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. He came and fulfilled the divine plan for us on the night when he was delivered up, or rather when he gave himself up for the life of the world. He took bread in his holy, pure, and blameless hands, gave thanks, blessed, sanctified, broke, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you for the forgiveness of sins. Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Remembering, therefore, this command of the Savior and all that came to pass for our sake, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection of the third day, the ascension into heaven, the enthronement at the right hand of the Father, and the second glorious coming. We offer to you these gifts from your own gifts in all and for all. The second son si prospero men cata panda, que dia panda. Please bow your heads to the end of the next hymn. Once again, we offer you this spiritual worship without the shedding of blood. We ask, pray, and entreat you. Send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts here presented. God be merciful to me, a sin and save me. God be merciful to me, a sin and save me. Bless Master the Holy Bread. And make this bread to be the precious body of your Christ. Amen. Bless Master the Holy Cup. And that which is in this cup to be the precious blood of your Christ. Amen. Bless Master both the Holy Gifts. Changing them by your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So if any of those who partake of them for vigilance of soul, forgiveness of sins, communion of the Holy Spirit, fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you, and not in judgment or condemnation. Again, we offer you this spiritual worship for those who are opposed by the forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and for every righteous spirit.
For Saint Alexios the Nana, Father and Catholic, the Enlightened of Ireland, Marinus the Martyr, Paul the Righteous, it is truly right to call you blessed, and to celebrate this day of Above all, remember, Lord, our Archbishop and Father Salas. Grant that he may serve your holy churches in peace. Keep him safe, honorable, and healthy for many years, rightly teaching the word of your truth. Remember also, Lord, those whom each of us calls to mind, and all your people. And all your people. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may praise and glorify your most honored and majestic name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. The mercy of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with all of you. And your Having remembered all the saints, let us again and again in peace pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the precious gifts here offered and consecrated, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That our loving God was received them at his holy, heavenly, and spiritual altar as an offering of spiritual fragrance. May it return and send down upon us the divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Having prayed for the unity of the faith and for the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, o Lord. We entrust you, loving Master, our whole life and hope. We ask, pray, and entreat, make us worthy to partake of your heavenly and awesome mysteries from this holy and spiritual table with a clear conscience for the remission of sins, the forgiveness of transgressions, the communion of the Holy Spirit, inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you and not in judgment or condemnation. And make us worthy, Master, with confidence and without fear of condemnation to dare call you the heavenly God, Father, and to say... Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Pater imon, o endisuranis, ai estito tonomasu, el feto i vasiliasu, Yenithito to Thelimasu, Os and Uranoke Epitizis, Tonarto Limon to Nebusion, Losim in Simeron, Kiafa Suminta of Lima Daimon, Os Kemisa Fimits Flat Simon, Kemis and Ames Massa Spirazmon, Alarissimas of Otoponiru. What do you swear, Stinivasi, I did not Que pela Simon to Kirio Clino Man. We give thanks to you, invisible King, by your infinite power you have created all things. 
By your mercy, and you brought everything from nothing into being. Master, look down from heaven upon those who have bowed their heads before you. They have not bowed before flesh and blood, but before you, the awesome God. Therefore, Master, guide the course of our life for our benefit according to the need of each of us. Sail with those who sail, travel with those who travel, and heal the sick physician of our souls and bodies. By the grace, mercy, and love for us of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all-holy good and life-creating Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Lord Jesus Christ, your God, hear us in your holy dwelling place in the glorious throne of your kingdom. You are enthroned on high with the Father and also invisibly present among us. Come and sanctify us. Let your pure body and your precious blood be given to us by your mighty hand and through us to all your people. God, be merciful to me, as God said. Thus, last thing. God, be merciful to me, as Let us be attentive. The holy gifts for the holy people of God. The Ayati Sahibs. Great Master, the Holy God is broken. I believe and confess, Lord, that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. I also believe that this is truly your pure body, and that this is truly your precious blood. Therefore, I pray to you, have mercy upon me, and forgive my transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, in word and deed, known and unknown, and make me worthy without condemnation to partake of your pure mysteries for the forgiveness of sins and for life eternal. Amen. How shall I, who am unworthy, enter into the splendor of your saints? If I dare to enter to the bridal chamber, my clothing will accuse me, since it is not a wedding garment. And being bound up, I shall be cast out by the angels. In your love, Lord, cleanse my soul and save me. Loving Master, the Lord Jesus Christ, my God, let not these holy gifts be to my condemnation because of my unworthiness, but for the cleansing and sanctification of soul and body and the pledge of the future life and kingdom. It is good for me to cling to God and to place in Him the hope of my salvation. Receive me today, Son of God, as a partaker of your mystical supper. I will not reveal your mystery to your adversaries, nor will I give you a kiss to Judas, but as the thief I confess to you, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. Behold, I approach Christ, our immortal King and God.
Christ, forgive me, sin. My brothers and sisters in Christ, forgive me, sin. Behold, I approach Christ. Has given the most precious and holy body. Our Please forgive me, the unworthy priest that is in here.
the fear of God with faith and with love draw near.
God, save your people and bless your inheritance. is our God. Always, now, and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Let our mouths be filled with your praise, O Lord, that we may sing of your glory. You have made us worthy to partake having partaken of the divine, holy, pure, mortal, heavenly life, creating and awesome mysteries of Christ, let us worthily give thanks to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord have mercy. Having prayed for a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Thank you, loving Master, benefactor of our souls that are in this day. You have made us worthy once again of your heavenly and immortal mysteries. Direct our ways in your right path, establish us firmly in your fear, and guard our lives and make our endeavors safe through the prayers and supplications of the glorious Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary and of all the saints. For you are our sanctification, and to you we give glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Holy Father, give the blessing. Please join us as we offer memorial <laughs> prayers today for the following souls departed this life. Eleftherios or Lou Parakakis, 40 days, Marianne Bastolis, 5 years, Helen Georgiakakis, 17 years, and Mary Baetis, 42 years. Please join us in prayer. 
I am an image of your ineffable glory, though thy bear the scars of my transgressions. On your own creation, Master, take pity and cleanse me by your compassion. Grant me the homeland for which I long, and once again make me a citizen of paradise. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. Give rest, O God, to your servants, and place them in paradise where the choirs of the saints and the righteous will shine as the stars of heaven. To your departed servants give rest, O Lord, and forgive all their offenses. <speaking in Hebrew> Αγιοσύ, ο πατήρων αρχός, ο συνάν αρχός, Υιός και Θείο Πνεύμα, φώτισον ημάς, πίστης η λατρεύοντας, και του αιώνιου πυρός εξαρπάσον. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Alleluia, 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 Oxasi, O the saints, O Christ, give rest to the souls of your servants, where there is no pain, no sorrow, no suffering, but only life everlasting. Τα πνευμάτων δικαίων και τελειωμένων 
τα ψυχά στον δούλο σου σώτερ ανάπαυσον πιλάτων αυτάς εις την μακαρίαν ζωήν την παράσι φιλάνθρωπε. In your peace, O Lord, where all your saints repose, give rest also to the souls of your servants, for you alone are immortal. Now and forever and unto the ages of ages, amen. Most pure and spotless mother, who ineffably gave birth to God, intercede with him for the salvation of the souls of your servants. Have mercy upon us, O God. According to your great love, we pray to you, hear us, and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the repose of the departed servants of God, Eleftherios, Marianne, Helen, and Mary, who have fallen asleep, and for the forgiveness of all their sins, both voluntary and involuntary. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. May the Lord God place their souls where the righteous repose. Let us ask for the mercies of God, the kingdom of heaven, and the forgiveness of their sins from Christ our mortal King and God. Mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. O God of the spirits and of all flesh, who have trampled upon death and abolished the power of the devil, giving life to your world. To yourself, O Lord, give rest to the souls of your servants, Eleftherios, Marianne, Helen, and Mary, who have fallen asleep. In a place of light, a place of repose, a place of refreshment, where there is no pain, sorrow, or suffering. As a good and loving God, forgive every sin they have committed in thought, word, or deed, for there is no one who lives and is sinless. You alone are without sin. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your word is truth. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your servants, Eleftherios, Marianne, Helen, and Mary, who have fallen asleep. Christ our God, and to you we give glory together with your Father, who is without beginning, and your all holy, good, and life-creating spirit, now and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. Pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your departed servants, Eleftherios, Marianne, Helen, and Mary, Christ our God, and to you we give glory with your eternal Father and your all holy, good, and life giving Spirit, <coughs> now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. <laughs> May our memory be eternal, dear brother and sisters, you who are worthy of eternal blessedness and eternal memory. Together, please. <laughs>
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Good morning to you all. On August 7, 2004, runners carrying the flaming Olympic torch were the first ones to cross the brand new Rio Andirio Bridge, a modern engineering marvel that connected the western Peloponnese with mainland Greece. It was a critical part of the Greek transportation infrastructure that made the 2004 Olympic Games that were spread all over Greece possible. The bridge was dreamed of for hundreds of years, but presented many challenging obstacles, including deep water, insecure materials for foundations, seismic activity, the probability of tsunamis, and the expansion of the Gulf of Corinth due to plate tectonics. So how did they do it? Intent. They created the plan. They let nothing stop them. They were bent on intent. On May 25, 1961, President John F. Kennedy laid down a daring challenge to a joint session of the United States Congress. He said this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. Within that very decade, on July 20th, 1969, American astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin became the first humans ever to land on the moon. How did we do it? Intent. We accepted the challenge, stuck to the plan, and let nothing stop us. We did not relent on our intent. Building the impossible bridge, putting a man on the moon, makes almost anything we think about doing seem a whole lot easier, doesn't it? But whether it's a small goal or it's a large task, it'll never happen without that common factor. Intent. Strong, persistent, and undefeatable intent. As we enter the holy season of Lent this year, my brothers and sisters, our Lenten theme here at Holy Trinity Church embraces the weeks ahead with that same foundation, intent. If you look at your bulletin today, you will see it on page three, I believe. And it also appears in the March Herald with its scriptural foundation from Psalm 116. What can I offer the Lord for all that he has done for me? I will take up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will keep my promises to the Lord in the presence of his people. I will. I will. It's stated twice in the answer to the question of just what should our response be to the Lord for all his blessings. Not, I might, I'm thinking about it, or someday, but rather, I will. Deliberate intent. So here we are together again today, standing at the doorsteps of what many like to call the Lenten journey. So my question for you today is, what are your intentions? I know that phrase because I had a teenage daughter once, so you get it. I use the word intent intentionally because it is a powerful word. It's more than just a thought, an idea, or a plan. It carries with it the expectation that something is going to happen, and that I have a lot to do with it happening. When it comes to Lent, indeed, you do. Now, this is not like the first day of a college course where the professor hands out the syllabus and says, and how many times have you heard this, you will get out of this course what you put into it. It's kind of a one in one ratio. That by no means is the message today. Because the Lord is far more gracious and encouraging than that, and generous. You want to see? Jumping all the way to the Paschal homily of St. John Chrysostom, delivered right here every year at the resurrection service and in every Orthodox church throughout the world, he affirmed that the Lord, quote, accepts the deeds, welcomes the intent, honors the act, and praises the offering. In other words, he blesses whatever it is that we try. An ancient writer, Defensor Grammaticus, says likewise, our behavior is only acceptable to God if we have the strength, the purpose to complete any work that we have undertaken. 
So it's a good day again to ask, what is my intent for Lent this year? Now the easy answer at the surface level is that I will pray, fast, and give alms. Those are generally seen as the three pillars of Lent. But intent starts deeper than that. It asks more than what, like what am I going to do? But it asks why. Why am I even thinking about it? Today's epistle of St. Paul to the Romans looks ahead for the answer to the light of Pascha and calls us to do this. Cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. That starts inside. It doesn't start with somebody telling us we have to do something. St. Paul knows our opportunity to do this is now. Be very careful, he says, then, how you live in Ephesians 5. Not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity. And here is our opportunity, your opportunity. As one writer has said, spiritual growth requires an intentional effort. There's that intent word again. Spiritual stagnation and decline, they require no effort at all. So let's wrap up today with some encouragement from the hymns of the first week of Lent. What I love about them is they're not commandments, they're encouragement. They meet us where we are, and they lift us up to where we can be, if we are intent. Regarding fasting, the Vespers of Pure Monday tomorrow says, let us cheerfully begin the season of Lent and undergo the spiritual struggles. Let us purify and cleanse our souls and bodies. As we fast from foods, it says, let us also abstain from giving in to any of the passions and instead delight in the virtues of the Spirit. Regarding giving, the Orthos of the first Tuesday of Lent, two days from now, says, let us offer virtues to God as gifts and let us set aside the works of darkness. And regarding prayer, the Orthos of tomorrow, the first day of Lent, calls us, let us shine with the bright radiance of the holy commandments of Christ our God with the brightness of love and the splendor of prayer. Intent. It's a powerful word that can yield powerful results when we set out on anything armed with it. Unless we be defeated by setting ourselves up for failure of pride, by thinking it's all about checking off a to-do list, remember, Lent is not about a checklist, it's about a heart check. We cannot earn paradise by our deeds, nothing we do. We can only prepare our heart to receive paradise as a gift from the one who opened it for us through his death and resurrection, the end of the journey of Lent. Christ is the author of our life. And he shapes our future, our reality, and who we are made to be. Our intent to make a plan for us a reality is what he waits for in everyone's life. Lent is a great way to let him know that you are ready to try. You can do this. It's not that hard. Nobody's asking you to build an impossible bridge. Nobody's asking you to send a man to the moon. As the saying goes, Intent makes things happen. Apathy wonders what happened. So this Lent, let's start with intent and humbly give the grace of God room to work in our deeds and in our heart. Concluding with some final words from a couple of beautiful hymns in the church, all stitched together as a Lenten tapestry. The time has come, start of our spiritual contests, the victory over demons, the full armor of self-control, the angel's dignity, the confidence before God. Let us off, set off on the journey to things above to see the irresistible beauty of the Master. Lord, make us worthy to worship your holy passion and resurrection. May the Lord indeed bless us, strengthen us, and lift us up as well as this year we head into Lent with intent. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. May the blessing.
blessing of the Lord and his mercy come upon you through his divine grace and love, always, now, and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to you, Christ, our God, and our hope. Glory to you. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy Father, bless. May Christ, our true God, who rose from the dead, have mercy on us and save us as a good, loving, and merciful God. Through the prayers of his most holy and pure mother, the power of the precious and life-giving cross, the protection of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven, the supplications of the holy glorious prophet and foreigner John the Baptist, the holy glorious apostles, the holy God-bearing fathers, the holy victorious martyrs, of the holy righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, Saint Alexis, the man of God, the pa Saint Patrick, the enlightener of Ireland, Saint Marinus, the martyr, Paul, the righteous martyr, and Theos, Theodistos, the confessor, whose memory we celebrate this day, Father and the Saints John Christus, the Archbishop of Constantinople, whose divine liturgy we have celebrated, and of all the saints. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. May the Holy Trinity bless and protect you. Good morning to all. Please be seated. Our parish council will offer the tray, and thank you for your offerings of support for the ministries of Holy Trinity Church. Before the regular announcements, I need to announce that I received an encyclical from the Metropolis on Friday. All the clergy of our Metropolis did. And at the top it says, to be read Sunday, March 17th, 2024, following the conclusion of the Divine Liturgy, but before any other announcements. So I will read this before I make any, any other announcements, other than the announcements that this is the first thing that I am reading just in case anybody asks. To the Reverend Fathers and Presbyteres Distinguished Archons of the Ecumenical Patriarchate, esteemed Metropolis Philoptokos, and Parish Council members and devout faithful, that is you all, of the holy and God-protected Metropolis of Pittsburgh, I was glad when they said to me, let us go up to the house of the Lord from, Isaiah, uh, from Psalm 122. Beloved, we stand together at the start of our annual journey into Great Lent, the period when we walk together toward the life-giving passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time of Jesus' earthly ministry, there was only one place for the people of God to properly celebrate Pascha, the temple in Jerusalem, which meant the pilgrimage drew together Jews from all over the empire, traveling with a common purpose and joyfully anticipating the common celebration of the Lord's deliverance from people from death to life. The Passover celebration was one that took much planning and preparation. Priests and Levites working for weeks to gather necessary supplies, citizens of Jerusalem preparing to open their homes and fields and rooftops to the pilgrims, musicians preparing to perform the hymns of the celebration. But this preparation allowed for the great convocation of the people, remembering and sacramentally participating in the event that defined their relationship with God and formed the core of their identity. As they drew near to Jerusalem and climbed Mount Zion, and again as they proceeded up the temple steps, the people would reflect on their need, their history, and the high place they were going, and on the joy they felt in coming together in unity in God's temple. We who stand as the new Israel of the new covenant also participate annually in this pilgrimage. Each of our parishes of Jerusalem and our sanctuaries are temples of God Most High. And yet, by the grace of the Holy Spirit, our journey is still made together. And when we gather in our respective churches, we celebrate Pascha together as one across parishes, metropolises, archdioceses, and patriarchates throughout the world. This year, we are too posed to gather together for a journey of a different kind, one of more local significance, the building of the new metropolis center. For this, too, work has begun far in advance. Years of planning, architectural rendering, ground testing, and other preparations have come together for the past several years, aided by the generosity of early donors, resulting in the commencement of construction on the site. Our endeavor also requires us to commit <clears throat> 
to journeying together, working with a common purpose of providing for the needs of our parishes and metropolises, walking in the same direction. We have shared the vision, the testimonies, and how this project will contribute to the life of our community, and more will be said on this in the coming weeks. Our prayer is that as we progress to the feast and through it to a renewal of our common life in Christ, we also commit to progress through our project, recognizing the unity of our parishes and purpose to shine the light of the Lord to those who need it, nurturing healthy and thriving parish communities for generations to come. Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers and sisters dwell in unity, Psalm 134. Indeed, how good it is when we work together for a common purpose and worship together in this most sacred time. I pray you have a blessed Lenten season leading to the glorious celebration of the Pascha of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with our pastoral blessings and love in the Lord, Metropolitan Savas of Pittsburgh. Now, for the rest of the announcements. Uh, our memorials today, we had memorial prayers offered for Lou Paracacus, Mary Ambistolis, Helen Georgiakakis, and Mary Bayetis, and we invite, welcome their families today. We invite you to join for Hospitality Hour. Also, I know Lent starts tomorrow, and this is the day you're waiting for. Goya Lenten soups are available and the gallery today. So this is a good reason for you to sit in front, because the people that get their undead on first get the first dibs of the soup. We'll be watching the doors to make sure nobody sneaks out the back to get in early take before. Um, Lent does indeed start tonight, so we begin at 6.30 in the chapel with, I must confess, one of my favorite and the most beautiful services of the entire year, the Solemn Vespers of Forgiveness, and that is at St. George Chapel at 6.30. I encourage all of you to come and join. Tomorrow is Pure Monday. We remember our pattern here. We're so blessed to have our chapel. So we do Mondays and Fridays at the chapel beautiful environment to do that, like being on a mountaintop in Greece somewhere. And then on Wednesdays, the pre-sanctified liturgies are here at the church because we do our Lenten dinner afterwards. And speaking of pre-sanctifieds, we have a really special opportunity this year to gather together as one Orthodox community in the North Hills because as you look at the back of your bulletin and you see the Lenten schedule, you will note that... The first one is here at Holy Trinity, but the second one, March 27th, will be at St. Alexander Nevsky Cathedral over on Thompson Run. And then the third one is back here, and the fourth one is down at the new church over here on, on uh, um, Duncan, and that is St. John the Baptist Carpathia Russian Orthodox Church. So we won't be having services here on the second and the fourth Wednesdays of Lent, but we are asking you to go there. We're also taking our children to do the readings, at least for the fourth one. And uh, this is a really good opportunity to just gather together as a singular witness of Orthodox unity and uh, Father John from St. Alexander's and Father, uh, mm -hmm, sorry, and my good brother, the other father from St. Uh, John's is uh, Father Dave Urban. Is, uh, we're all kind of working together to do some inter-Orthodox activity, which is in our mission statement as well. So, just a few other things, and I'm sorry there's a few more announcements, but we want to make sure we cover all of this. Um, one more Saturday, the souls. If you have submitted your names, you do not need to submit them again. So that will be at the chapel on Saturday. We really appreciate people bringing the koliba because that is necessary for those memorial services. Um, of course, festival cooking, it's in the bulletin here. Please read uh, this Thursday and Friday. Next Sunday, we have the joy of hosting uh, two special things. So one is the Divine Liturgy in the morning. Remember, parents, bring your icons with your children. Have them put their names on the back so they don't lose them. And our staff will have the... Uh, procession around the church following the Divine Liturgy. But for the Divine Liturgy itself, we have a special guest, Bishop Andre of the Romanian Orthodox Episcopate of Cleveland. Don't worry, he speaks beautiful English. Uh, and he will be coming and ser serving the liturgy with us next Sunday morning. And then on Sunday evening, he is the guest speaker in the hierarch for the Sunday of Orthodoxy, which is also Annunciation Vespers. So we will celebrate that here at 4.30. Our Philopogos and other volunteers are putting together a really nice Lenten reception afterwards. And I understand that there are actually going to be two other bishops here, Bishop Archbishop uh, Melchizedek of the OCA and Bishop Irine of the Serbian Diocese, but it is Bishop Andre who will be presiding and who will be speaking. So the last thing in the world, please, I beg of you, 
the last thing in the world is to have all of our friends from other churches and none of us here. This is your church. You're gonna come and see people drop their jaws when they walk in, because many have not seen this church since it's completed. And we have the joy of really sharing on the Sunday of Orthodoxy, I mean, Orthodoxy right here. So please, I know it's, I know it's a lot. I know it's two services on one day, but you can do it. Like I said, if you have the intent to do it, you can do this. So please plan next Sunday, liturgy, and then 4.30, the Sunday uh, evening, Vespers of Orthodoxy. All the rest of the announcements are in here. Please pay attention to them. We look forward to seeing you at the hospitality hour. Uh, please join and greet the family and offer your prayers and condolences. And we look forward to seeing you during the Lenten season. Kali Serakosti, a blessed Lent. Kali Matanya, a joyful repentance to us all.